Hello again, I'm in Stoke with Mastermind Games, back for more, for more War Machine, and this time the Crix Corruptor, Stormy Gray 0908. Corruptor is based on the Slayer Reaper chassis. It's one of the low cost ones, but as opposed to damage, it's more about dirty tricks. Damage output's a little low, but it's a claw and a gun either inject or spray the target with mystical poisons and when it boxes a living enemy warrior model it's choosing attack type and when boxing a living enemy warrior model if I remember right gets a particularly nasty effect such as turning the target into a temporary arc node for its caster or healing its caster I can't remember what the third effect is, but definitely more about dirty tricks than direct damage. This one's running a bit thin. I hope I have enough to do the job. gray and I'll pick out other colors later including some lighting effects in the tubes where the poisons are stored this will go much quicker than the Kraken because of a much smaller surface area to worry about I'm using just enough water to uh, thin the paint not too excessive solid base coat so I'm gonna let that dry and move on a bit. Okay next I'm gonna take tarnished brass 09198 or no old bronze 09197 got mixed up there. It's been a few days since I've worked on this so I had to wrap up my taxes which is something I do myself. Quite frankly, I think the uh, whole tax preparation industry is a sham because unless you have incredibly complicated finances and investments, you really don't need anything more than a basic W-2. Right. So here... some of these pistons in the legs. And these big wheel-like arbitrars on the hips. Pick out some of these pipes. So, hell jacks are steam powered. So all these pipes serve to funnel the steam in very specific ways to allow the cortex installed to move its body. I should mention this is the new kit. The uh, first version of this kit built the Slayer Leviathan or Corruptor, or no, Slayer Reaper or Corruptor. This one builds the Corruptor, Reaper, and uh, the character Helljack Malice. Which 
which I have previously done. And a lot of Crix Jacks use a steam pressure method for firing projectiles. This again because of how rare certain um, that how rare a gunpowder blasting powder is. As I said before, most of Crix's supply of the substance comes from raiding. And tends to be used by the pirates that steal it. And while I'm not doing the exact same color scheme as I did on the Kraken, this is going to be similar. So similar details we picked out in similar colors. It's a little thick right there. Let's see now. There are certain patterns I look for when I'm painting. One pattern I like to do in bronze across the board is this sort of a hold or pitted surface. Which to me brings to mind some kind of heat sink. After all, like any engine, it's definitely possible for a war jack to end up running hot, overheating, etc. Some sections of arm I'm getting in this as well. I may go, I may pick out another color to do some of the cabling again though. I don't know if I'm that satisfied, but go ahead and get the ribs here. And when I get the, uh, I might redo this uh, breastbone portion. Unlike the Reaper and Slider that the Corrupter is based off of, it does not have head spikes, so these fang-like protrusions, as far as I can tell, are purely cosmetic. If there is some secondary purpose they can serve, I'm not aware of it. I think I'll get this grill right here. Uh-oh. Okay. Then going to get the tops of these canisters for the toxins, and where the lighting is pretty severe. It's one thing that has helped with all these focus problems I have had with these videos. Go in and get some of the, try to get some of the pistons at the hips, which are really not all that visible. Okay, now I'm going to let that dry. Okay, I did pick out a few more details in the bronze, but now it's, uh, chaotic red and add a little color to it.
After all this time, I still don't really have a cohesive Krug's color scheme. I lean more towards a sort of a black carapace with second a variety of secondary colors thrown in there, favoring dark reds, dark violets, and dark greens. And after all, all everything the Iron King is, I haven't quite got the hang of a machine assembly yet, so everything is handcrafted. So even going off the same plans, you could have plenty of differences in, uh, minor differences in even uh, functionally identical warjacks, especially among crooks whose necro techs are very competitive and always trying to outdo each other. With colorations marking units earmarked for different divisions also being a thing. Even my Signor, which is one of the more cohesive color schemes I have, I don't paint every jack exactly the same. Sometimes I end up picking out different uh, pieces in different colors. secondary plate under the shoulder, being careful to avoid the bronze on the tanks. I'm not, actually, that's going to be steel, now I think about it. We'll do these plates on the foot in the red, though. I'll try to keep my fingers out of the camera. enough red actually. So uh, plate mail metal. Make certain I'm recording still. Yes, good. Let's get some blades here. And a lot of these aren't really meant to be functional. Again, Crix makes their war jacks as weapons of intimidation as much as weapons of war, so. Extra spiky bits definitely make the intimidation thing more obvious. knee here in the plate mail metal to make them match these shoulder blades. These shoulder blades, not any hypothetical blades that might be inside the quote-unquote skeleton of the machine, but some knee spikes. Feet. And the more 
one interesting thing is uh, somehow hell jacks may actually go quadrupedal at certain times. There is artwork in an early book for a seether that seems to be charging on all fours. Again, spiky bits just intimidation. We'll get this little tail piece as well. Let's see. I want to get these spikes in the forearm. And I definitely, definitely want to get the needle claw. How about this spiked section of the barrel of the cannon? part of the barrel itself, I think. Why not? Let's see here. Another spike right there. <coughs> Excuse me. Another thing that happened to me this week outside of working on taxes, I caught an ear infection. That knocked me out for a couple of days, so that was miserable. Nothing you can do about it, though. So I had to go into the doctor, which I did, so... Okay... Hmm... You know what? I think that's good. I think that's base coats. So I'm gonna let that dry completely and then move on to some shading. Time to shade. One part water and one part paint. I'm going to start with the red, so red brick 09001. And one part water to one part paint. One part water, one part paint. I think I dropped a frame there. Then this out into a wash. Just going over the red. That cawing sound that may or may not be coming through, by the way, is just a... I have a whole murder of crows uh, hanging out on the trees on that property. So, they're just chilling out doing their thing. I'm chilling out doing my thing. Alright. And then... Uh, black and steel zero nine two zero five. section of the body at a time so I don't miss anything.
just about there. Okay, and the bronze is just going to have to wait a minute. That's about halfway on the shading. Okay, next, HP order 09196. I'm gonna be doing some I'm gonna be doing plenty of lighting effects here, so but that needs to be prepped after shading's done. So I'm just gonna go from the bottom of the top there. Just dab that in over these like pistons. I think I nicked something I didn't want to there, but that's alright, I'll deal with it later. in the abdomen. So we'll kind of work on one section here at a time. And minimize the chance I miss anything. The rib cage. here is really severe. There's not a whole lot I can do about it right now. Ah, that happened. At least it didn't fall far. But lighting is something I can still play around with. I am limited by space and the positioning of uh, electrical outlets to plug a lamp into. But in terms of video advice, there is no shortage of criticism on YouTube. But advice, practical, good advice on how to improve things is very difficult to come by. So I found some helpful tips, but not a whole lot. So a lot of this I have to figure out on my own. Okay. I don't know, I might pull out some, like khaki or something and get those pipes in a different color. But for now, I'm just gonna roll the things the way they are. So any adjustments to the color scheme will be done off camera. Maybe. We'll see. We'll see. I'm kind of indecisive about a couple of details right this second, so we'll see what happens in a minute. Shading usually goes much faster than the base coats do. Yeah, I am. I am getting over up. Like I said, I'm getting over a bug. I'm a lot better, but <laughs> still got a little bit of recovery to do. All right, let's see here. Is that it? That is it for the bronze, that just leaves the black, and then I can start on lighting effects. Alright. <sighs> Last shade, matte black. Now with particularly dark colors like this, you'll need two to three parts water to one part paint to properly thin it to a wash. Which also means you can skimp on the pigment itself a bit more than usual. Okay. Start 
put on the smokestack here. That honking you may or not may not be hearing outside of uh, crows loving the trees on the condominium property I live on. There's also a lot of Canadian geese in the neighborhood. What's really neat is those geese will actually use the crosswalks. <laughs> So just animals adapting to the human world. I'm gonna start on the torso here. Avoiding the other colors, making sure to get the carapace. Especially where the other colors leaked on. over the head and the mechanical portions of the mandibles, which might be there just for intimidation purposes. Again, Crix builds their jacks to be as monstrous and as, and as monstrous and intimidating as possible. Oh boy, I have lost my ability to speak today. <laughs> Gonna start in the areas I'm least likely to uh, brush up against by accident. Look at the legs going to the feet and the parts of the toes that are not steel. because Crooks uh, kind of skimps on using steel in their designs because they have to. Their Helljacks are only about as durable as a light warjack from other factions. So. Again, they're using uh, tricks to make up for durability and damage potential, essentially. bottom piece of the chest. I'm still wanting the black. Look at the sides there. Can't really see that on camera, I imagine. Getting the other shoulder socket. This style of war jet kit especially has quite a bit of articulation, how you can have it posed. This is essentially just a ball with the shoulder having a cup. It can go on just about any position. And I've got a little kink in my thumb there. Just taking this cannon one section at a time. my brush nice and wet during all of this. Now that just leaves the other arm. I kind of forgot a couple of spikes here. I'll just leave them at this point. I'm not going to worry about getting the containers. Because so, those are all going to be done with a lighting effect. arm weapons, make sure I've got a nice solid coat. Okay, once that's all dried, I can start the lighting effects. Mm. They're just the lighting, I think. 
Come on. All right. Matte white. Prepping some lighting effects. Using the same amount of water as a base coat, carefully fill in between these ribs here on the front. fill in the eyes. And then the tubes or canisters I've been calling them for the chemical compounds that are injected or I should say alchemical to be a little more more accurate. Whoa, almost dropped them again. And now, more jacks for senses. They've got sight. I'm assuming they have a sense of hearing since they can respond to vocal commands given by Jack Marshalls. But they cannot actually speak. They can communicate after a fashion by venting steam in specific ways. But it's more of a show of emotion, and war jacks can develop pretty elaborate personalities over time in general. I don't know if uh, retribution war jacks are designed in a way that allows them to develop personalities. And the Convergence believes that thought is the soul realm of beings with souls, so their machines, while elaborate, do not possess anything that could uh, any form of intelligence. But other warjacks can develop substantial quirks over time, such as the Signar character Jack Thorn being very protective, the Crix warjack Nightmare being very merciless, the mercenary warjack Rociante having an unexplained fondness for children. That even its uh, owner, Captain E. Dominic, De or now Captain Damiano, can't even explain where Rociante picked up this affinity for kids. Okay. That's good, I think. I'm going to let that dry completely and then start doing some lighting effects. Okay, all right, a little matte black next. Just going to take this and put a little dot in the barrel of the can. And I could hypothetically do this as a lighting effect too, but the question would be which one would I use? And now for the lighting, lemon yellow, 09009. Using two to three parts water to one part paint to thin it. on each arm. More right there. 
key is for some of that white to be shown through. Then vampire red. Zero nine zero one two. Not just for the third canister, but also for the rest of the lighting. for some of the light to be shown through. back into a little more red on these as well. Hmm. A lot of these are starting to blend together. You know, that's okay, though. It's okay, though. It'll help make it look uh, corrupted. I will go ahead, though, and take the paper towel and just try to soak some of that excess up. Okay. dry and move on a bit. Oh, wait. One more thing I can do right now is take matte white and do, again, do some prep work for the front arc. So I'm going to take a flathead brush and I'm going to, since I'm using a bright color at the end, just put this, I'm going to overextend deliberately at first. And then just back, just cut it back later. Now, once that dries, I can highlight detail and wrap up. All right, highlighting. Going over to a dry brushing technique. Uniform gray. Uniform gray. Just not mixed up quite right. Let's try that again. Better. Okay. Using a ragged feathered brush like that. Rubbing most of the paint out on the paper towel until it looks like there's next to nothing left. Adjusting the areas to be affected, going against raised areas. Go 
focusing on the most readily visible surfaces, so a lot of the underneath is not going to be done. So first, I think. Hopefully the shoulders here. And I just realized I forgot a significant part of the lighting, so I'm going to have to backtrack and do that. I'll, I'll still finish the gray. I can do that. Oh, boy. I hate it when I miss a spot. So I'm going to stop here, fix this up on top, and I'll uh, come back in a minute. Okay, with that little oversight, let's try this again. So the gray's been highlighted. Next, tarnished brass, 09198. And this is the part I missed on the back. I wanted to get the lighting in between the ribs, for lack of a better word anyway. And focusing on the most readily visible surfaces. That a nice burnished finish. I'll get a little of the muzzle, for lack of a better word, that I can. And trying to focus on the most readily visible areas.
refreshing the paint as needed. Which I think I got kind of thick on this arm. To be more careful about that. It feels a little flimsy as I highlight there, so let's grab that. Next, let's do Vampire Red. Okay. True Silver zero nine two zero seven. Just need to pick out the right brush for the job on there. So the weapons are a Necro Claw and a Necro Checker. I just, or Necro Injector, I just checked it. the highlights. Now it's gonna be some that, that went flying. It's gonna be some basic to do, but first pale green 09012 again and getting the color on the arc. If I wasn't doing this uh, white first I'd have to do two or three coats of this. Which ended up being a bit thick so this helps to get a nice bright Crix green. And front arcs are critical in this game because that's where you make attacks through. You are more vulnerable the back. Okay, let that dry completely, then I can touch up the arc and go from there. Okay. Okay, this is where it gets a little funky here, both with the angle I have to have and everything else, so this is a self-healing cutting map Privateer Press puts out. Just right now getting him centered the way I like, that black. Now this is to finish up that arc. So first off, I'm going to take a thinner brush. 
also shorter for more control. And just, oh, that one is about shot. I can't use that for this. I'll try a different one. Very carefully. Just get the edges where that bark is going to end. Oh boy, that was close. I think I was going to break it for a minute. Okay. Okay. Let's just polish that up there. Real carefully. Too much water. That's when the feet aren't coming close to the edge at all, but I just want to make this nice and clean. Okay. All right, I need to let that dry completely. And then I can move on. I'm just going to double check here and make certain we're okay here. Yeah, we're fine. Okay. Next, in that white. And since I will eventually have more than one of these, I'm just going to take a brush and put Roman numeral one on the back. And now that's going to need to dry a minute before I do the flocking, but just about there. Okay, second to last step that I can do on camera. Mix a white glue and water. Boy, this is clogged up. Get that uh, mixed up. The brush you're using for this is essentially going to be a sacrifice, so just bear that in mind. Painting around the feet. taking flock and this has a bit of static grass in it Just give it a dip knock out the excess I'm gonna take a spare brush that's dry and just dust it away from areas I don't want it step I can't do on camera is varnish it, which involves a spray can, aerosol spray can. I need to let this sit for a while before I seal this, but 
just about done. All right, final step, scenic cement. This is a sprayer brush of adhesive. I'm using a glass eyedropper. Glass because this stuff will bond to plastic quickly. It's going to carefully drip it into the flock. Let it soak up. And this will seal it. Give it a rock hard finish. Then after this dries, I will varnish the model to seal the paint job as well. And I need to let this uh, flock set for a bit first. I gave it about half an hour. Otherwise, it'll just make divots in it. Cleaning out the dropper. And that is it, a Crix Corruptor. Got some more Crix on the way. Until next time, I am Ian Stokey with Mastermind Games, signing out.